The FIA scrapped the ultra complex front wings in 2018 for simpler ones, and then even in recent times has removed some of the features of those. Today I've prepared some CFD using a general 2023 model, but I've copy and pasted on a 2018 front wing model from the Perrin Formula 1 car for a little bit of fun. Now the goal of this is to see what happens with the front wheel weights generally. These are the two geometries, where on the left we have the 2018 front wing, and on the right, a 2023 front wing. Uh, you can instantly notice the difference in geometric complexity and overall span, where the old wings weren't going all the way out to the edge of the front wheels. And these older wings created a lot less load. Uh, this is largely due to their lack of surface area and their attention on flow conditioning. You can see that this is particularly evident within the central section of wing where the Y250 is created. And the Y250 was a principal structure on all previous cars from 2009 to 2021, as shed off the inner tips of the front wing, being passed in between the chassis and the front wheel. And due to its direction of rotation, I found it had two main effects. Significant inboard downwash and lots of lateral expansion. Now the downwash was so aggressive that it separated the inboard suspension fairings and began to roll up a counter-rotating structure of the underside of the nose. This is pretty similar to the roll up of the Cape Vortex in the previous generation car. Now I imagine that this downwash would have fed the bargeboard footplates, producing a series of co-rotating vortices and lots of forward downforce, which is probably why they didn't struggle with balance. The lateral expansion or outwash was considerable near the ground plane, where the lower wheel weight was pushed aggressively outboard. Now, this was aided by the fact that the vortex itself moved outboard, largely probably due to the static pressure of the floor. Now, the general floor performance was decreased with the Y250, since it created so much lateral expansion that it actually separated the leading edges of the floor streaks, reducing vortex production. But I'll talk more about the performance later. There are a few more interesting interactions, particularly around the front wing outboard lower devices, like the expansion tunnel and strakes. Now, the expansion tunnel housed a very lossy vortex, which blew up almost instantly, being sent straight into the front wheel. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. For example, if you take a lot of really high energy air and throw it near the contact patch of the wheel, you'll produce a huge amount of squirt, because the tyre has a lot of energy to work with. But if you don't give the tyre much energy to work with, it generally won't produce as much squirt. So perhaps that's why we have those expansion-like tunnels on earlier Formula 1 cars. Similarly, the straights roll up a vortex, although these don't burst even though they aren't produced all that cleanly on this geometry. I think the goal of these is to add localised downwash to the tyre squirt region, again aiding the management in this area. And finally, some of the upper devices, like the cascades and the turning vanes, increase the upper outwash. And this helped to carry the bulk of the wheel weight further outboard. Now, a quick note should be made for the flow field at the rear of the car. The new front wings, with their lack of foot plate and large span, inwash lots of air near the ground. Now, this in part helps to narrow the area of wake for the following cars. Now, the older front wings, on the other hand, manage the wheel weight much better and produce a much larger region of dirty air. A quick disclaimer, I know my wheel weights probably aren't entirely accurate, and that's okay because Formula 1 teams sometimes get it wrong. And they've got hundreds of Smarties, they've got uh, wind tunnel data, they've got um, track data, and they've got supercomputers. I'm trying to talk generally. So the model with the 2018 front wing did actually produce less load overall, despite its superior front wheel weight management. But I'm fairly sure that if I adjusted some of the vortices off the outboard section of the front wing to interact more cleanly with the added deflector on the new generation Formula 1 cars, I'd find performance. I'd also find performance if I re-sculpted the underside of the nose, um, and adjusted the angle of attack of the suspension fairings, particularly on that inboard separating section. Uh, I'd find more performance as well if I used that downwash more effectively on the inboard section of tunnel by reshaping the leading edge, and most importantly, if I just aligned the strakes in the underbody, I'm sure that the floor would produce much more load. Um, so it kind of goes to show, you can't just copy and paste the geometry and put it on and expect it to work every time. Thank you for watching.